Hello everyone, so in this video we're going to explain the Schiffe method. In our previous example involving the diameter of bacteria applied with different kinds of antibiotics, we rejected the null hypothesis and accepted the alternative hypothesis. In this case, we need to make a follow-up test to pinpoint which treatment is significantly different over the other. This was our problem. This was the problem which we solved using uh, Microsoft Excel uh, in which we analyzed this problem using one-way analysis of variance and we found that there were significant differences among the uh, means of the four groups. So this is the output of Microsoft Excel when we perform one-way analysis of variance and we rejected the null hypothesis and accepted the alternative hypothesis because the F ratio, which is 12.9, is greater than the F critical. So this is the very reason why we are conducting Schiffe post hoc test. So why are we using Schiffe? It's because uh, Schiffe test is more versatile as it can be used to compare treatments having different numbers of samples. For example, in our control, we have 14 as our samples. Then for um, the treatment treated with antibiotic A, there were 14 as well, then 10 and 16 number of samples for the other groups. Now, to begin with, step one is to compute the absolute mean difference for each pair of mean being compared. So in this case, we are going to subtract uh, 4.15 from 5.06, so the difference is 0.91. For the second group, uh, mean sub 1 minus mean sub 3. So 5.06 minus 5.13 equals negative 0 0.07. But because we are getting the absolute value, we remove the negative sign. So also for pair number three this is mean sub one against mean sub four we subtracted 5.11 from 5.06 so the difference is negative 0.05 but we again remove the uh, negative sign because we're dealing with the absolute value and so this the difference for pair number four five and six now for the step 2, we need to compute the variance of the mean difference for its pair. Uh, for pair number 1, the formula is ms within, which is 0.2425, multiplied by 1 over n sub 1. So 1 is constant, n sub 1 is 14, plus 1 over n sub 2. So our n sub 2 is also 14. So by substitution, we have 0.2425, then 1 over 14 plus 1 over 14. So 1 over 14 is 0 0.07 plus 0 0.07. You add this one and multiply that to 0.2425. So we got 0 0.034 as our variance for pair number 1. For pair number 2, we have 0 0.041, 0 0.041 for pair number 3. 0 0.041 as well for pair number 4, 0 0.032 for pair number 5, and 0 0.039 for pair number 6. Now let us proceed to step number 3. In step 3, we are going to find the square root of the variance which we obtained in step number 2. So just extract the square root of 0 0.034, that is 0 0.1844, and extract the square root for the rest of the variance uh, for the other pairs all right then let's proceed to step number four in step number four uh, we are going to uh, find the ratio of the value obtained in step one or the mean difference these are the mean difference to the obtained value in step number three or what we're going to do is to divide the mean difference with the square root of the variance so this is the mean difference and this is the square root of the variance so for us to get this ratio which is 4.935 so and these are the ratio for the other pairs now let us proceed to step number five for step number five we are going to compute the test statistics by using the formula 
square root of df between times f critical. So our df between is 3 and our f critical is 2.79. So square root of 3 times 2.79, that is the square root of 8.37, equals 2.89. So this is our test statistics. What we're going to do with this is to compare this to the ratio which we obtained in step number 4. So for example, for the first pair, our ratio was 4.935, and this is greater than the test statistics, which is 2.89. So that means uh, the test is significant. We can say that uh, 5.06 is not equal to 4.15. Or we can say that there is a significant difference uh, between 5.06 and 4.15. For our next pair, 0.346 is lesser than 2.89, so this test is not significant. And therefore, we can say that 5.06 is equal to 5.13. So these are our uh, decision for the rest of the pairs. Step 7, we are going to simplify the interpretation. Uh, for example, the control antibiotic B and antibiotic C, they have similar superscript. So this means that there is no significant difference among the diameter of bacterial colonies in the control and those treated with antibiotics B and C. Now for antibiotic A, which has a superscript of B, we can say that the diameter of bacteria in treatment applied with antibiotic A is significantly different among other treatments. Another way to present the result is by arranging the averages by magnitude. So antibiotic A has the lowest average followed by the control, then antibiotic C and B. So this was our superscript in the previous slide. Then what we can do is to draw a straight line below the control and connecting to antibiotic C and B, this suggests that there is no significant difference among the diameter of bacterial colonies in the control and those treated with antibiotics B and C. So this uh, line suggests that uh, these three are equals. Then a line here under antibiotic A means that the diameter of bacteria in treatment applied with antibiotic A significantly differed among other treatments because this line is just uh, below antibiotic A and is not connected to the other groups. Alternatively, we can show a graph like this. We did this in our first exercise. So this is the average of the control and uh, for the other groups we have here the the averages as well and the error bars here so what we can do is to put a uh, letters here above the bars so the bars having similar letters are equal or no significant difference and antibiotic a is um, represented by letter b indicating that it's significantly different from the other treatments so that's all for now. See you soon.